and we should be alive. How are you doing? Welcome to the Crypto Factor. And today's show, we were supposed to be talking to a lawyer, answering your questions, your questions on law or anything legal or anything you need to talk about. We were supposed to be answering these questions and we still should be doing this depending on one thing and one thing only. If the lawyer actually shows up, you see, it seems that the lawyer didn't show up. <laughs> I'm sure something happened to Zoro. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be talking to him. I'm going to be doing a live stream. If the video looks a bit choppy, it's because it's supposed to be two people. And right now I have it on full screen. It might be a little bit choppy. It doesn't really matter. If our guest, if the lawyer guest shows up, then everything will be fixed and everything will be okay. And until then, all I can do is keep you some company, try and answer your questions on my own. I am not a lawyer, but ask me any question at all, whether it's on crypto, whether it's on marketing, whether it's on sales, and let's just have some fun. Let's just talk. And if I see the lawyer not showing up, I'll just cut the stream short and, you know, maybe order a hit on him or something like that for completely, completely embarrassing me here. So how are you guys doing? How are you? Welcome to the stream. We are The Crypto Factor. If you are new here, my name is Paul. I am the host of The Crypto Factor. And usually this shit doesn't happen. Usually everything runs smoothly, but our guest is a little late. So what this channel is all about, if you're new, it's all about crypto, but for the cryptopreneur, for the aspiring cryptopreneur that wants to make it in crypto, that wants to do business in crypto, that wants to invest in crypto, that really is more serious about crypto, if that makes sense. So if that's something you're interested in, if, some, if that's something you're looking for, then check out my other videos on this channel. And if you like what you see, maybe you can consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification button. So you know, you can see the interviews that actually show up. Other than interviews, we also do short videos. We do one minute short videos, which means we answer your questions in less than 60 seconds. So we don't waste your time because we know your time is valuable. We respect your time. We do those videos daily. We also have some normal videos here and there, and we do our straight from the Doge Park, our live from the Doge Park show, which is random. It can just show up anywhere. And that's all about a live AMA, uh, kind of like this one, but it's with a doge, with my dog, my pit bull. And we're at the park and we answer your questions. It's actually a lot of fun and those are random. So you kind of have to be subscribed for those so you can show up, so you can be notified. And finally, every Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m., we have our dedicated live stream uh, on this channel, 7 p.m. EEST time on uh, a Sunday. So... We don't see we don't see the crypto lawyer getting on here. So what we're going to be doing? We're going to be talking. We're going to be chatting. And you know, I'll just change the channel. I'll just change the title after this video is finished. If he doesn't show up, so let's ask. Let's answer some questions here. Let's talk to the sh chat. By the way, I'm drinking fizzy water, no sugar, but bubbles are involved, and I'm also drinking some normal water. So if I want to copy Ivan on tech and if I want to copy BitBoy Crypto, I can say I'm drinking water, bubbles involved. And I'm also, this show is also sponsored by Vicos, which even though BitBoy Crypto says that, I kind of actually coined that on this channel and the last channel I had before that. But hey, it is what it is. If he wants to share my water sponsorship, no hate, BitBoy Crypto, you're allowed to drink water on your show, man. It's okay. I'll give you the okay. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah, let's see here. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if he's shown up. Let me just check my... No, he hasn't. Zorro. His name is Zorro, by the way. Zorro. Man, come on. All right, let's see who's in the chat. I see Gypsy Lexi. I see Paul Cox. I see Michael John Scott. And I see Blaze Matai saying he will go to the lawyer's house and make sure he shows up. I also see, what do you think about Cardano? We got some questions. Let's, let's talk with Gypsy Lexi. Nice name, by the way, Gypsy Lexi. I like that. Um, he's asking, doing well. Richard Hart live stream tonight with Adam Stoltzky, by the way. Okay. If you want to tune in, I'm kind of doing my own live stream, and it's 12 o'clock 
well, it's 11 o'clock and 20 minutes in Greece. If that law, if the lawyer doesn't show up, then I'm just gonna go to sleep. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll play some poker with Blaze if he's, if he's up for it. Um, I also see Paul Cox saying, let me, let me read this. We will wait. In the meantime, what are your thoughts on XRP and Gary G G Garlinghouse today? Okay, look, um, I don't have any thoughts on Garden Garlinghouse. I, I, uh, sorry, Gary Garlinghouse, I think is a cool guy. My thoughts on XRP, though, I can give them to you. Um, so my thought of, my, my thought of an XR on XRP is this. XRP, I feel sorry for the XRP army. Let me explain. I don't mean pity-wise. I used to hold XRP. I used to hold XRP in 2017. I made a lot of money with, two, with XRP. Sold almost at the highs. I was kind of lucky on that, by the way. Then sold in the, mid, in the low $2 range. And, they, and, and then I, I was left over with a bag from 2017, right? And even though XRP did some nice shoot-ups, uh, some nice pumps, I noticed that it kept on getting suppressing down, and that also happened during the bull run when everything else was pumping. Now, at some point on XRP, we broke support. Now, I'm bringing a little bit of technical analysis in here because that's what happened. We broke support, and essentially I sold my XRP. I'm like, you know what, we, sold, we broke support. This is gonna go down. It's gonna take a while to come back up, so I sold it. And then the news came out with the SEC and all that drama. So it went down even more. Now I had a choice. I could have bought the lows and wait for the bounce. I decided not to. Prior to that, I put my XRP into SNX, synthetics. That went very, very well, by the way. So as that was going up, I did my fundamental analysis, my technical analysis, and I decided on this. I will get back in XRP even now only if two things, two criteria are met. The first criteria is all of this drama is sorted out with the SEC. And when I say sorted out, not what Garlinghouse's lawyer said or what he said or she said. I mean, actually, I want clarity. I want to know what's going on. But even more important than that, I want XRP to break a key resistant level, which is around 70, 72 sets, okay? If it breaks that level and actually holds on top of that, and also we have clarity, that means that XRP, on a technical point of view, should go up, but also as exchanges start re, uh, relisting XRP or ending the suspending, whatever you want to say, that should give the, the price more momentum, it will shoot up in stages. So that will give you time to buy. And even if I buy at a higher price, even if I buy over a dollar, a dollar and a half, doesn't really matter because if we have clarity and that happens and they don't keep on dumping on their investors, then it will still be a good buy. But you have to understand that opportunity cost, not be, being in other coins like SNX like I was and being in NX, XRP, it's huge. We Even if XRP triples tomorrow, I would have made more money just by selling when I'd sold. So that's my point of view. That's my opinion on XRP. And if you're just joining, we're waiting for the lawyer to join the live stream to answer your questions. He's not here yet. He didn't show up. So until then, I'm just talking to you guys. We're doing a little bit of an AMA um, until he shows up. And then we'll see what goes on. So I'm looking at the chat over here. And the next question is... Blaze Matai will show you, yeah, Blaze Matai, yeah, well, he's going to go to his house and drag him over here. Blaze Matai, are you a lawyer by any chance? Can you, can you, can you be a lawyer for this show? No one will know. <laughs> no, no one will know if you're a lawyer or not. All right. We see Sasha Mesenberg saying, what do you think about Cardano? I think Cardano is a good buy. I, I, I see a lot of predictions for Cardano ADA ranging from the $100 to $1,000 to $10,000 range, which is, which is ridiculous. Let me give you my point of views on Cardano. I am in Cardano, right? Now, my views is if this bull run continues, if we keep on going to a, on an uptrend and Bitcoin doesn't dump on us or some sort of black swan event doesn't happen or whatever, if we are in fact in a bullish trend, Cardano, I'm aiming to from 7 to 10 cents um, target. 
And by the, at the end of the bull run, when the, the really parabolic run, you know, drives up, that goes up, then we could see a 14 to 19 cent Cardano ADA token. So that's pretty good profit. So I am holding Cardano. And those are my views on Cardano. Now, is it my favorite coin? No, it's not. But I do think it's pretty cool. I think it's good that they're trying to do different things. They just got smart contracts enabled, which pretty much gives it a, a, as a competitor on Ethereum. I don't think people should get out of Ethereum. I think Ethereum is a buy. I think Ethereum will go to eight to 10,000 in this bull run, maybe 17 to 20,000 at the peak. Uh, I would be buying X, uh, sorry, Ethereum if I was you. Now, not financial advice. But I do think that Cardano is a good runner-up. I do think that Cardano is there if any FUD goes into Ethereum. And I do think it's a second choice, um, at least in the short and mid-term. Uh, I think it will have its real shine in the next bull run. Like after this bull run ends uh, and, we, and we just go down. And that's when I think Cardano will have its um, really magnificent run. But that said... Not that it's not going to have a magnificent run now. I mean, 7 to 10 cents, that's 7x, 10x. We might even do more than that and go 20. That, that, that's pretty, 20x is pretty strong, right? So that's my views on Cardano. You can hear me drinking. All right, let's move on. Let's see what else we have here. Let me just make sure he's not trying to message me. He is not. Now, I, I'm looking at, um, I know that my editor is writing the questions on WhatsApp, but I'm trying to wait for the lawyer if he messages me. So, actually, I can look at the messages from here, so I don't have to look over there. You know what, uh, Alex, I'll just look straight at the chat over here, and that's fine. Just remind people to subscribe, like the video and all that, so I don't do it now and then, right? And if I say anything, maybe you can drop a link when I have to, like the CryptoFactor.net, which you can actually subscribe to my mailing list, get a whole bunch of surprises in better right now, but we're doing a lot of giveaways and stuff like that, so make sure you check that out after the live stream. Let's see what's next. Hope my ears are clean. <laughs> There's a crypto company called SelfKey, which says it enables people to easily register on an offshore company linked to an ID wallet. Okay, that's a great question for the lawyer that's not here. Uh, so, <laughs> so I don't know about that, so I can't really answer that question in confidence or be able to help you there. Um, but please, you know, if you can join the next live stream when I have the crypto law title up again, maybe we can answer that question for you. But there are companies that you can, you know, register offshore companies and stuff like that. I don't know about the ID wallet. That sounds interesting. Maybe I can look into it myself and check it out next time. Gypsy Lexi, she. I'm not sure. Oh, she! You are a she? Are you cute? Just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome to the Crypto Factor. My God, there's a girl in crypto. That's so awesome, dude. You know, I'm not being funny, but there's very few girls in crypto, other than the influencers you see on Twitter, which is a thing right now. Um... There's very few women, very few girls actually into crypto. And I, I, I really like that. I think it's really cool for girls to be in crypto. I think it's sexy and I think it's really cool. All right, let's move on. Uh, what do you think about Hot Hollow? I have no idea about it. Haven't looked into it. I do. I have heard there was a... Was there a dump? I'm not even sure. I, I don't even know about Hollow. I'm not even going to try and talk about it. Paul Cox th says he agrees with me. I agree with you. <laughs> Plus, we have the same name. We're both called Paul. All right. Char Chariton uh, Caritonoline says, Can lawyers use their company bank account to buy and stake coins such as Hex and Ethereum? Great question for a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. The lawyer didn't show up. I'm hoping he shows up. Um, maybe he comes a little bit late. Maybe he confused the time instead of 11.30. Maybe he thought it was 12. Maybe he comes in half an hour. We will see. I've been messaging him. Uh, we'll save that question for the end. As a matter of fact, if Alex, if you can, t Alex, if you can, t Alex is my 
editor and moderator, by the way. Alex, if you can split, if you can write down any questions that are for the lawyer, that I say this one's for the lawyer. Excuse me. If you can separate those questions so we can ask him in the, when he gets on to the show later on, or if he doesn't show up, maybe we can ask him in another show or answer these questions in another stream. I'd really appreciate it, man. So any lawyer, legal-based questions, like offshore companies and stuff like that, please write them down somewhere. Keep them so I can ask them when he shows up or in another stream. All right, let's move on. Gypsy Lexi, I bought ADA but sold too early. Was rather trading it. Don't know if it still makes sense to FOMO in. Well, look, I can't, I'm not going to pull out charts right now, but what I will do is I'm going to quickly glance at it for you. How about that? See how cool I am. And I'm going to give you a very basic t TA from what I remember, okay? And from. And from what I can see here. So basically, it has its run to about $1.4, $1.5 um, dollars, right? And right now, it's trading at just under. Okay, it's trading at $0.98, cents, $0.99 cents euro, not dollars. Okay, let me see if we're going to have here. Looking at the charts right now, it had its drop from the highs. Went up a little bit, almost had a double top. And it's holding support. I think it's a good buy right now. I think Cardano right now, without getting too much in the technicals, I don't want to get into technical analysis on this video. I don't want to change my Zoom screen just in case the lawyer shows up and stuff like that. Because uh, I could just push a button and get that l nice little banner on and there and everything when he shows up. But without looking too much into technical analysis, I think Cardano right now is at a buying range. And what I mean by a buying range is uh, you can start dollar cost averaging in. So if you were to invest a thousand dollars you might want to invest 250 dollars today 250 dollars in a few days 250 dollars in a week and so on and that way you'll get the best average price um, price in over that uh, period of time you could do this weekly you could do this daily you could do this monthly depending on your trading style and where you want to get in but you could start dollar cost averaging or start getting into um, cardano right now it's not a bad price i would get in if i didn't own any um, not financial advice, but it does look like it's a good price. If Bitcoin keeps going up here, let me have a look here. If Bitcoin keeps consolidating or oh, keeps trading sideways, sorry, and goes up from here um, and doesn't do anything unexpected, Cardano should be a good buying level. So, yeah, that's my personal opinion. Let me just pour some water here and we'll look at some more questions right now. By the way, we recently got monetized yesterday, and you can now super chat this live stream if you really want. I'm not asking you to do it. I'm just saying you could theoretically super chat this live stream, and you would actually be the first one to ever super chat the crypto factor. Uh, also, I am running some ads. I have accepted some ads on my videos, but... Because I hate, I even did a poll, but because I hate ads everywhere, the only ads I'm running are skippable ads in the beginning of certain videos. So sometimes you might see a skippable ad in the beginning or at the end of a video. You won't see banners between. You're not going to see like suddenly ads coming up on screen being like, sure, skip this ad. Just like you just like you skipped Amazon and Google, or so you know, you know, like the, that ad or other ads, um, they might show. I'm not gonna have them showing up in the stream, I'm not gonna have anything on the side or anything in the bottom, but you might see ad, an ad in the beginning of a video if that makes sense. And that's just to help out the channel so I can pay my editor because I've been paying for everything out of my pocket up to now. Not that I can't, but you know, why not? Why, why, why not have some sort of um, revenue from what I do, right? And besides, I can give you more free gifts because I also give you free gifts every Sunday. So let's move on. Uh, let's go. Faith, uh, do you like XRP? So I used to like XRP. I used to hold XRP. Right now, I have a love and hate relationship with XRP, and I'll explain to you why. I made money with XRP back in the day, so I can't say I don't like it. Um, whether I like XRP or not, though, 
I can't let fundamentals and technicals be, be blinded from my own love, like, or whatever for a project. So there's a saying, you don't marry, you don't marry your, your cryptocurrency. You don't date it, you trade it, right? I'm out of focus right now. Let me, let me get back into focus, wait. There you go. All right, so whether I like XRP or not doesn't matter because I go by fundamental analysis and mostly I go for technical analysis. I'm more of a 80% technical, 20% fundamental trader. Now, with all the drama going around, with everything that's going on and with the technicals, I, I'm not buying or trading XRP right now. I did say earlier that I would if we have clarity with the SEC and if we break resistance of 72 cents and I'll buy back higher. I have no problem with that because if that happens, we should go a lot higher than that, right? But I don't want to get involved in all drama right now. Um, Gypsy Lexi says, very late in crypto, end of 2020. Well, you know what? You could have been earlier. You could have been in 2017 and then, you know, there, was, there, there would be a big dump and you would have lost everything or be four years before that when it happened again, right? Or three years or whatever it is. So... It's never too late to get in crypto. You actually early in crypto in the sense that you you just got in for the bull run. You just got in for the important part, right? So you're actually kind of early. You're not actually late. As a matter of fact, you're lucky you're late in a way because if you got in like let's say 2018, 2019 wouldn't be that good for you unless it was accumulating phase. But most people got wrecked from buying and selling because the price kept dropping. So consider yourself lucky. Hex friend got you in. Awesome. Sacha Messenberg. I'm in crypto to Werkstatt. Werkstatt. Is that is that German? Werkstatt? Weikstatt? I'm not even sure what that means. Um, two weeks ago. Okay. So you're new. I'm not trading only HODL. I think HODLing is the best you could do, especially in these markets. I used to trade. I used to day trade. I wasn't very good at day trading. I am okay as I'm, I'm good as an investor and I'm okay as a swing trader. I make money there. Not very good as a day trader. And each person has to find what they're good at and what they're not good at. Day trading wasn't my thing. Um, swing trading worked out a lot better for me. And investing is more of my thing in general because I like investing. So don't feel bad if you're not trading. I think trading is something you need to learn if you want to get into trading. It typically, it typically turns, takes one or two years to learn technical analysis. Now, that might seem like a long time. People think they can do it in a day. You can, you can learn how to drive a car in a day. It doesn't mean you can go out and drive. In theory, you can learn how a car works. It doesn't, doesn't mean you can drive it. Um, it needs one or two years. And if that seems like a long time, it isn't. It actually takes, what, six to eight years to be a doctor, eight years to be a lawyer, one or two years is nothing. You can actually make more money than them, uh, right, just by trading. So you could start learn, learning how to trade. And guess what? The good thing about learning how to trade, and let me just see if we have any messages. No, we don't. And the good thing about learning how to trade is even if crypto markets go to zero, which I don't think they will, but even if they do, even if, even if we have a bear market, you can still make money from it going down, but you can also use trading in Forex and, and, and stocks and other things as well. So it's a, so it's a cool thing to learn because you'll always have a job, if that makes sense. Plus, it gives you a different way of thinking, a different perspective. It's actually pretty cool. All right, let's move on. Uh, Sasha, okay. Sasha says, what is your price prediction for Bitcoin this bull run? Very good. So my price prediction was and still is $88,000 to $140,000. That's what I'm looking at. Now, will I take all my money out of Bitcoin when that happens? No. Will I take part of my Bitcoin out and my trading positions out? Yes. How much will I take out? Probably by probably 25% around 88,000, another 25% somewhere in the 100,000 range. And then I'll, I'll, I'll see what I'll do. But it all depends on what the charts are doing right there and then uh, what's going on because things do change. And I see a lot of people complaining, oh, this technical analyst said one thing this day and things change the next day and it keeps on going back and forth. Well, yeah, because the charts say something different. So we don't, 
you know, you know we things change in crypto, especially in crypto. But things change, and you have to look at the charts, look at technical analysis, look at moving averages, look at what price action, look at volume, and depending on that, you take your trades, right? So things, you know, things change. There's a mosquito in here. Let me see if I can kill this mosquito. Wait. Shit. March and there's a mosquito. There's been mosquitoes all winter this year, and the reason is the, the weather. It, it got cold like for a, a few days, it snowed, and it got cold for like a week before that, maybe a week before that. And, and ever since summer, it's been summer, it's been like spring in Greece. It's insane. We have like mosquitoes and everything. Crazy shit. Anyway, let's move on. Thanks for the comment. Uh, very nice that you share your experience with us. Hey, look, this channel is all about sharing my experience and helping you guys. I'm a, I, I do a lot of things. I love this channel. We're growing fast. Uh, we just got over 4,600 subscribers in a couple of months. We got monetized. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> Give me a second. Ah, I got it. Damn it. Die! Okay, I got it. Sorry about that, guys. Um... <laughs> And we got monetized. <laughs> we got monetized um, a few days ago, two days ago. And as soon as I applied for the monetization two days ago where I was eligible, we got the monetization in two days flat, which means now people can super chat and there's some ads on. It was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so let's move on. I think there's another mosquito in here. Man, this is insane, dude. I think they all like crypto. They want to hear the crypto factor and see what we're all about. Okay. All right, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks, Alex. All right, faces, bro, if you look, sorry. Where are we? If, if you look, I would think you're Turkish, not Moroccan. I, I'm not Turkish or Moroccan or Arabic. I'm actually Greek, right? Mm. By the way, I'll tell you about Greek in, in a second. If you hear barking, and if you see the door suddenly burst open and noise and a pit bull jumps in here, it's my puppy pit bull. His name is Diaz. Uh, it's an American Amstaff, nine months old, which recently, he used to open doors by pushing them out. But recently he's learned how to get up, open the door, pull it backwards and get out. So if he gets out of the living room and gets in here, there's going to be a whole bunch of ruckus, a whole bunch of noise. He's insane. He actually has a Doge coin address. He has a Doge address down, down, down below in the description for donations. <laughs> and he's insane. And you can actually meet him. If you look at my live streams during the week, I have these impromptu, these uh, surprise live streams called Live from the Doge Park. And what I do is I go to this private doggy park where there's a different dogs, there's like a swimming pool and stuff like that. And I take my dog there. He runs around, has fun, you know, has friends. And I live stream. It usually ends up with me trying to, like, chase him around, um, uh, him doing stupid shit and me getting in trouble live on the Crypto Factor. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications so you don't miss. They're actually quite fun. And the thumbnail, instead of me with live, it ha actually has my dog, like, crazy. Like, it's got, like, a cute look. And then it's got, like crazy look it's got different looks you'll see it's actually got a lot of fun anyway i'm greek uh my mother was turkish oh no sorry my mother was armenian uh so i'm greek cypriot and armenian basically and the re and, and i speak a little bit of arabic just just a tad because my parents were born in egypt they were greek born in egypt or greek cypriot and and a little bit of armenian and i was thrown out i think it was with um not nasar um farouk they were getting rid of all the Europeans. They moved to England. I was born in England. So that's my story. So yeah, very crypto there. Very crypto-related anecdotes. Let's move on. All right, let's move on. I'm looking to divorce from XRP. Did you did you sign a prenup? In meaning, did you take a stop loss? <laughs> Look, you could slowly get off XRP again, something else. Maybe you can hold a little bag just in case. But at least, you know, diversify so you don't lose opportunity cost. Because while you're waiting for XRP to moon, 
everything else is mooning to the point that even if XRP moons tomorrow, even if it goes double, like I said earlier on, you've you've lost more. <laughs> you've lost more profits. So maybe you should diversify. And if I if I'm wrong, and if you're wrong, it's no financial advice. If we're all wrong, hey. At least, you know, you did the right move. Maybe it wasn't the best move. Maybe you would have made more money. But the right move is to diversify from XRP. At least that's my view. All right, let's move on. If you had 10,000 euro. I do have 10,000 euro. <laughs> okay, wait. Oh, okay, wait. Would you? Would you put 5,000 XLM, 5,000 XRP? This to be a millionaire, but only to have a house for a living. A house in Europe is two hundred fifty thousand. No, I wouldn't. I would. I would put. If I had ten thousand dollars right now in this market, I would put five thousand dollars of that in um, in blue chip high market coins in in, in in good coins. Okay, and I would put three thousand of that in mid caps. And I would only put a thousand or two thousand euros in or dollars in um, moonshot coins. Let me explain which ones I would do. So I would put it in Bitcoin. I would put five thousand in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Link, maybe SNX and Polkadot. Now, right now, I probably wouldn't put it in Bitcoin. I would put it in SNX, Link, Polkadot, and uh, Ethereum. I would hold it, and then as it would go up, I would take profits into Bitcoin, right? Profits into Bitcoin. On my mid midterm um, money, on my 3,000 euro, if you will, I would invest in something a little bit more, um, I would invest in DeFi, basically. Um, a, coins like, well, SNX would have been in that, uh, category, I guess. You know what? Give me a second. Let me let me give you a really cool. Let me give you a really cool uh, portfolio right here. Swiss Borg, BNB maybe, and Adam, uh, maybe some Uni, and then for my Moonshot coins, I would literally put it in Cake. Uh, ADA, even though it's a good coin, it's it's a Moonshot coin right now. One inch. Maybe Rune and maybe Lubrin, right? So I would do that split. And then as my lower coins go up, I would put profits in my mid coins. And for my mid coins, I'll put it into my high coins. Now, this more or less can be replaced. It doesn't have to be those specific coins. I made a video about this, about what I'm holding and what I'm doing exactly. I also did a live stream talking about this as well. Look at that. I'm just doing it off my head right now. But basically, that's the strategy I would do. Um, I would put it in about five or six coins. I wouldn't put it more. And I would choose maybe, again, Ethereum, Polkadot, and Link as my top coins to take profits into Bitcoin. And then maybe SNX um, and some other, as we said before, yeah? <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit like edgy because the lawyer didn't show up and I, I didn't plan the show and this is all impromptu right now. It's whatever's coming out. So do forgive me for that. If I if I look a little bit overwhelmed, it's because I'm also thinking, is this motherfucker gonna oh, there goes my monetization. I just I just got monetized. Will he show up? We don't know. We'll see. All right, let's move <laughs> let's move on. I'm hundred percent in ADA. Diversify, dude. Yeah, mosquitoes are a nuisance. They are, they really are. Diversify, man. Don't don't put it in one uh, one coin. At least put a little. At, at least put a little bit in polka dot, and maybe a little bit in um, pancake or trust swap or something something like that. Just just a little bit, right? Maybe some link, and then take profits into Bitcoin. I want to invest to have money to retire for my mother. That's nice, man. Uh, there is a Moroccan spider that will come back. It's really cool, man. It's really cool doing things for other people, especially your mom. Uh, Sasha Mesenberg says something if I'm Greek. Yes, I'm Greek. All right. Oh, in a uh, Some two different languages right there with Greek fish involved. Okay. 
Royalty Rawam, is it a good idea to get ADA now? I just said it's a really, I think it's a good price to get some right now. I really do because we did a shot up and, and, and we went down a little bit, right? I'm just going to try and make layman terms here. We did a shot up, we took it down, it we, we, we seems like it's holding support. It might be a good idea to get in or dollar cost average and don't put everything into it. Put a little bit into it, maybe a little bit tomorrow, a little bit next week and so on. So you can average out a good entry price, right? Does that make sense? So if it drops more, you can get more. But it's a good idea to average into ADA um, right now, I think, in my opinion, not financial advice. Can XLM or XRP reach $50? No. Um, <laughs> it's sort of, look, anything's possible, but no. Um, I would say that XRP and XLM, because it's kind of like the same sort of thing, right? Same sort of movement. And I think XLM is a little bit better right now and safer than XRP. I wouldn't be surprised at hitting $10, maybe 12 or 20 but only if, only if there is clarity from the SEC. I just got out of focus, wait. There you go. There you go. Only if there's clarity from the SEC, only if it, if it goes over resistance, closes on top of 72 cents. So I would start buying XRP at 75 cents, 78 cents, and so on. If it holds on top, and if you see that the company doesn't keep dumping coins on you, then yes, it could go to $10, $12 XRP, maybe. Maybe not even that, maybe five, five to seven. I don't think it's a good project in this bull run, dude. I, I, I think there are other plays that are better. I really do. That's just me. Tomorrow I buy for 2,000 euro or more, okay? I don't think so. Message retracted. Ziggy Wiggly. <laughs> awesome freaking name, Ziggy Wiggly. Is there any taxes on crypto? Great question. So depending on where you live, there's different tax structures. I know that in America, or America even has states, but most of America, it's, it's, it's classified as capital gains. So you actually pay capital gain taxes on your crypto, depending on how um, long you hold it for. Uh, I think if it's more than a year, then it's less tax and so on. But it really depends on which country you live, where you live, and what they are doing for crypto. Now, one thing to be very careful of is if you are living in a country where there's no tax on crypto, don't think they won't implement and don't think they won't backtrack it. Meaning they could say something like taxes are starting on cryptocurrency right now and you have to pay taxes for any crypto for the last few years. So be ready and make sure you know about that just in case. Um, and just, you know, keep in mind that I can't really give you um, legal advice because the lawyer is not here. He would be much better for this question. Uh, but I do know that answer, if that makes sense. Yeah, such a $50 must have a market cap of about $1 trillion, which, which is insane. I don't think XRP will do that. You, you, know what, you know what I mean? It's insane. Z at least in this bull run, yeah? And, and with no clarity, you know, it's hard. Maybe in the next bull run. Maybe. And that even then, I, I wouldn't bet the farm on it. <laughs> All right. When do you see cryptocurrency being fully indoctrinated into the world's financial system? Great question. I give it five, 10 years for it to be significant, significant, uh, significantly there. I don't know about fully, you know, I don't know about the fully thing. Um, that's a question for Andreas Antonopoulos, by the way. But I think five or ten years is going to be part of our life. People are going to be using it, um, and even banks and so on, even if they're quiet and hush hush about it, if that makes sense. That's just my own um, uh, speculation answer, if you will. It will take a whole video to explain why I think that. XRP baby, XRP baby. Faith, you kill the XRP army. <laughs> no, look, dude, the XRP army, I, some of them are really cool, but most of them are crazy and insane anyway, dude. Like, you have no idea the kind of hate I get. Because, you know, there's people that hate XRP and there's people that love XRP. I 
I'm unbiased. I think my XRP views and how I answer, I think it's fair. It's pretty cool. And I made a lot of videos on XRP explaining my views. But some people, and, and they're one minute videos, and some people don't even watch the video. They just look at the title and they just answer and they just attack. So I don't know. If XRP, if XRP Army was um, a computer game, they would, if, if it was like World of Warcraft, or Lord of the Rings, the XRP army would be like the orcs or something, where they just attack, like <laughs> brute force. Link Marines would be like the elves, you know what I mean? Hex would be like the dwarves. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Faye says, what is the tax in Holland? I have, I'm not from Holland. What about rumors of XRP hitting 10,000 to 35,000 views cross border. I think those are just rumors, speculation, unfounded and insane. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Let me give you a better example. Look at the amount of people holding XRP from the XRP army. Now look at the average IQ of people in general that you know and realize like half of the people you know Le half of them have less than an average IQ. And look at the average person of their IQ. Now, look at how many people you think are going to get rich. All right? Do you really think that all these people on Twitter, the XRP Army, people on YouTube, the, the Schillers, all these people, right? Do you really think they're going to get rich holding 100 euros worth of XRP because XRP is going to go to $35,000 a coin. I don't think so. Okay? Because we're going to talk, we're talking about multi-billionaires and trillionaires if that happens. Right? Somebody holding a 5,000 XRP will have a shitload of money. It's not going to happen. Not everyone's going to get rich. Not everyone's going to get rich in this bull market. People are going to start getting greedy, not sell, and they're going to lose 90% of their profits anyway. Because they don't know how to take profits. It just happens every time. And... XRP is not going to go to that amount because it will make a lot of stupid people rich. Um, and I'm not saying XRP people, just XRP people. I'm talking about cryptocurrency people in general. It's just that the, you, you got to think it's too much, right? So even in that perspective, even if you don't think about um, market cap and all that shit, just think of that. There's people out there holding one XRP thinking they're going to make $250. No, sorry, $35,000 from it. Like, it's not going to happen. Sasha says, in Germany, you must pay 45% taxes after a year. It's free. Oh, after a year, it's free. So that's pretty awesome. That, that make, that's pretty good for hodlers, I guess. Uh, that's a pretty good deal. I, I could live with that. So when the bull run finishes and everything starts going down, start buying crypto and make sure you hold it for more than a year. That's pretty cool. Faye says, I have 500,000 euro now. I will marry in Greece a woman... A woman and you will come and you will come if you come to Greece and you get married I'll give you a very good present dude I'll show you around and um, if you need security for that that amount of money I even have a team of security security detail for you as well <laughs> if you come to Greece seriously if anyone's in Greece hit me up man all right let's move on I'm actually very well connected here all right I cannot pronounce your name Nintia Nintia is that Indian I have 10 x my investment in crypto in four months. How can I minimize capital gains tax in US? That's something for the lawyer. The lawyer didn't show up on the live stream, but Alex is taking down all these questions. My moderator and editor is taking down these questions for um, taxes and legal. And I'm gonna ask him next time he's on the stream when he gets here, or I'll find out and answer it myself for you. But I can't answer that, partly because I'm not in the US. All right, Faze, haha, <laughs> great name, haha. Have you anyone old enough to remember Steve Martin, uh, the man with two brains? His name was like something. Uh, his name was Ha Ha or some some shit like that. He was like from Holland. <laughs> it's actually funny. All right, I have. What is it? Um, if the banks will use XRP Ripple, then it will be huge hugs. Can also not reach thirty dollars. 
it can still, it, it might, I don't know if it can still reach authority of dollar, even if the banks, it might, they might have to put down the price. Let me tell you about a theory in technology in general. A lot of times, investors, early investors, overpay prices for what people will get free later on. Let me explain what I mean. Maybe I can explain this better. If you invested before the dot-com bubble, you paid a lot of money for stocks. Well, no, let me give you a better example. If you bought a phone, like when phones first came out, this is like, this is like, like an iPhone right now, right? It's, it's, it's what, 500 euros, $700, right? My last iPhone was, uh, this one's the, the SCE. I had one for $1,200. But there's mobile phones out there now that are $100 or $200. But back in the day, $500 would buy you a piece of shit. It would also, for a phone, you would also pay a shitload of money for, um, for um, your uh, packages. And you would even pay for your SMSs. Things that people now don't pay a lot for and get for free. So you have to understand it's also an investing. A lot of times you overpay, like a technology that comes out, like something that is revolutionary, like Bitcoin and, and, and crypto. At least when it comes to crypto in general, these projects that may or may not be used, a lot of people will be overpaying for them in these bull runs, which later on might go down in price, but still have a big use case. So XRP could be like 20 cents and have a great use case later on. You don't know this, right? Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying it is a possibility. So just because something might be very high right now, it doesn't mean it's going to be that high later on. Don't look at it as a stocks. Look at it more as an invention or um, something new, if that makes sense. And I'm not very good at articulating myself today for some strange reason, probably because I'm pissed off at the guy not coming. <laughs> He's a friend, by the way, so I'm allowed to talk like that to him. All right, let's see what else we have. Do we have any messages from him? Not, no, we're not. Let me say, we are live. Come on, dude. You are late. All right, let's move on. All right. I have five millions of XRP coins. Congratulations. You have much more than me. Um, sure, is China banning Bitcoin min 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 miners? Uh, but China is always banning someone. <laughs> China bans someone one day and, and, and stops the ban the next day. It's been going on for years, the China FUD. The good thing is China is not as important as it used to be, at least when it comes to crypto. Yeah, sure, there's a lot of miners, a lot of things there, but it's not as important as it used to be because they did so much shit like in 2017, 2018, and so on, 2016, that people really ignore them. I remember I have a video on my other channel, my entrepreneurship channel, which is Paul Democracy, by the way, where, where, where I'm talking about China FUD and a FUD from China and how you should ignore it. And after that, the bull run just started and then Bitcoin just went up like crazy. And, and you can see those videos on my other channel, which I don't use anymore because that just, that's just for entrepreneurship, marketing and success. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, Sasha says we must only pay tax only if we sell our crypto and send it to a bank account. Or again, that's a question for the crypto lawyer, which is not here, and that depends on which country you are and so on. I do think XRP will go to ten thousand dollars. Okay. Plus, I believe XRP investors will get paid out of around five hundred dollars per coin. Price ten thousand to thirty five dollars. Okay, well, it's not, dude. It's not going to do that. I'm just telling you right now. If you believe that, just because you have one XRP or a hundred XRP, whatever, it's not going to happen. So, just keep that in mind. I missed, but I'm not going to miss on this prediction. It's not going to happen. All right. 
And not only that, I can prove to you that you don't really believe that. I bet you right now $35,000 will put in an escrow. If it goes to $35,000, I'll give you five times as much. And if it doesn't, you only pay me $35,000. You wouldn't do it, right? So you don't really believe it. Phase Haha says, I think Bitcoin will have a dip till $5,000. And then all the money will go to XRP, ADA. Okay. I don't think Bitcoin will go under $12,000 again. And if it does go, and, and I'm betting, yeah, that's my nine to $12,000 is my worst case scenario for a bear market. And that might not even happen. Maybe it's going to be like seventeen to $20,000. I don't believe it is, because if it does, it's going to break all, all linear charts up to now, if you will. At least that's the way I see it. All right. And that's not a dip. That's literally catastrophe in the market. Right, well, look at it now. Let's say Bitcoin was at $60,000 tops, right? Give or take. If we go into a bear market tomorrow, Bitcoin typically goes down 85%. So even in that case, it would still not reach $5,000, right? What's 65,000? Um, what's 90% minus, minus from 65,000? Can someone do the math and let me know? All right. Do you see Ziggly Wiggly, I love that name. Do you see a majority of cryptocurrencies disappearing and deemed useless? Which coins do you see? What an amazing question, dude. I love that question. Yes. I see 97% of cryptocurrencies going to shit. Um, even if you look at last year's, years before and so, if you look at the top 10 coins every four years, they all, they usually, they change. Certain ones remain, but most of them change. Now, most cryptocurrencies will vanish. The, we have too many of them. If you look at the dot-com bubble, where everybody was in dot-coms, and the, the, the main names, the companies, and everything, the, the, the internet, and all that, the big bubble, most companies then, big companies, don't exist today. Now, you do have certain ones, like Amazon, like Microsoft, and so on, Google, but most other companies vanished. Same thing is going to happen to crypto. You, Bitcoin, Ethereum is going to be around, maybe a link, some other ones, Polkadot maybe, we'll see, it's pretty new. But most of them will vanish. Also, you have to understand that 98% of crypto is a scam, whether they know it or not. See, most companies, what they do is they have a project, they have a dream, they have an ambition. They put up a roadmap, a white paper, a website, and sell you their dreams. People will buy the coin and they will fake it till they make it and use that money in Ethereum that's coming in to make their project a reality. Now, some of them have use cases already because they're working, but that doesn't mean those use cases will be relevant or be accepted or be needed in a few years from now. Most of the companies are faking until they make it, which is fine if the CEO decides to make it a reality once he does get enough money, but that's depending on him. The other thing is if they will succeed as a business, because most of their it's most of companies are their marketing is shit and they don't know how to run a business. Very smart people, they know how to do tech, but they don't know business, and that happens. Plus, you know, black swan events, um, things that happen they don't expect, and so on. Even even personal problems. So most cryptocurrencies will fail. Only a few will survive. And these won't be many. And you can look at the, a good way to see this is which ones have consistently remained at the top over the years, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Many are too new to even do this um, analysis on, but look at the top 10 the last years and you'll see it keeps on changing every year. So keep that in mind. So yeah, most of them will, will vanish or will go to zero, or will be worth nothing, or will have a slow, painful, rotting death. All right, let's move on. A lot of speculations that Bitcoin will reach 100000 to $400,000. It's crazy, man. Not really. It's not crazy. 
if you look at the last bull run, we went what? We went to, we went all the way from one thousand five hundred. Correct me if I'm wrong. To twenty thousand dollars before it pulled back. That was a ten or twenty x. I, I can't remember the prices side going up. It depends on where where you start counting it from. In my situation, I started buying Bitcoin at two thousand five hundred dollars. So it eight x, if you will. I know it ten x. So. Right now we're at sixty thousand, no, forty-five thousand, some shit like that. It only needs to double or three x to get to one hundred and forty thousand, to one hundred to one hundred and forty thousand. Bitcoin can ten x, it can five x, it can ten x. So looking at four hundred thousand, three hundred fifty thousand, whatever, it's not that bad because don't forget we passed the all-time highs of twenty thousand. What's a ten x and twenty thousand? Two hundred thousand. Was it 20x and 200,000, 400,000? So it's very possible. Why not? Uh, more and more people are getting in. More and more people are finding use cases. Uh, it's being um, accepted. It's being validated by people and companies all over the world. I don't see why not. A, good, a nice little crisis, you know, a nice little um, thing. It'll get there. All right, let's move on. Randolph Harrison said, for all you XRP holders, it's only going to go up to $3. It'll go up, no, I think it'll go up to $3. it will go more than $3. If, if XRP, look, if XRP breaks 72 cents, which is resistance, and if XRP gets clarity from the SEC and everything's okay, the previous highs, all-time highs of XRP was $3 something. So if it breaks that, I don't see why it shouldn't go to 7 or $10. But I don't think it's going to do it. But that's a different story. I have to look at the technicals. Sasha says three dollars fine to take for it. Okay, there's other coins that will definitely do better. Is XRP a scam? I don't think so because now checked by the SEC. Okay, there have been scam, not scam, non-accepted practices by XRP that have been proven. The problem with XRP is not the SEC is just picking on them. The problem with the XRP, for example, is it's proven that they were paying market makers to pump up the price what they sold into it. That's a big no-no. Also, um, X, there's been like evidence which may or may not be proved that they were dumping on investors, which I noticed, but I'm, I can't talk about that part. But XRP being a security does not make it illegal. It just makes it that they should have labeled it as a security. They could probably get out of that one by paying a huge fine. So that's the issue with XRP. We don't know what's going on. There's no clarity. It's it's no man. I I I don't like I don't like um, trading like that. So it might it may or may not be a scam, but it definitely had some scam activities or non-accepted practices, if you will. All right. I think the XRP army is bigger than the Bitcoin army. <laughs> I told you, they are. Ziggy Wiggly. It's certainly more passionate and more visionary, not visionary, but speculative. Which coins do you think are the most useful to serve humanity, financial systems the most. Bitcoin. And if you tell me about it wasting energy, that energy we can be put back and be used, right? Um, it's the only one I know right now that is truly decentralized. Uh, uh, if you start talking about Cardano and Africa and all that, that's, that's a different story. That's just PR. And it might be used, it might help. That's, we don't know that yet. All right, let's move on. What's your stance on the SEC lawsuit to XRP? Do you think it's a security? I do think it's a security token. It pretty much shows. Ah, we have our lawyer here. We have our lawyer here. So let me just admit him real quick. That's so cool. All right, let me just. I just admitted him. There you go. So we have our lawyer here finally, which is pretty cool. So let me just fix this. There you go, Zoro. Welcome, man. Thank you for joining us. I'm really, really sorry for being late. 
We're live, by the way, just so you know. We're live right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, Zoe so, 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 so is our lawyer. He's a crypto lawyer. We're going to answer crypto questions. We do have a lot of questions for you that I couldn't answer. I, I went with the, I did the live anyway. So, I'm really cl glad you're here, man. It's been a while um, since I've seen you. So, now you can start, a you know, answering, uh, asking for the people watching all your lawyer, legal, tax, whatever questions you may have. And we will, well, we will answer it as well as we can. I haven't seen you for a long time, man. Last time I saw you, we were in Bulgaria. We were both in Bulgaria um, working with Vido. I was doing some consulting work there, man. I miss you. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty well, man. I'm pretty well. Actually, actually I was in the middle of an emergency uh, because uh, I would be expecting some questions about uh, the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies and the legal status. And there is something very, very interesting that I can share with you and your viewers right now. Okay. Uh, because I was right in the middle of such emergency. It was like police involved in this kind of stuff. Oh, wow. But if you, if you guys just know that Bitcoin cannot be subject to a theft in many countries, in many countries, because uh, f since recently, it, it wasn't recognized as... Um, uh, something which is uh, object, you know, a subject to a theft can be money, which is something which is considered to be equal to an object, right? right. And then uh, even e-money is equal to an object, but it's legal tender, right? It's a Bitcoin is not. So if somebody steals your Bitcoin and your Bitcoin, like he doesn't steal your ledger, if, if he steals your ledger, physical. it's a theft. Because it's a physical but object. Yeah, physical object, right. yeah, containing bitcoins. And then you can prove that this ledger has so, so many bitcoins and is worth this. But if it's just the bitcoin, somehow it, it cannot be subject to theft. Wow, dude, that's crazy. That's insane. I didn't know that. So that's why people, so that's, that's why all these scammers are, 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 are stealing um, bitcoin. And we're wondering why do they take bitcoin? Because, you know, they can find them. They don't care. Yeah. Cause it's not that yes. it's insane. Wow. Absolutely. That is insane. I didn't, I didn't expect that, man. I, didn't, I really didn't expect that. <laughs> so there it you is, go. It, it is was worth the wait, actually, man. It was worth the wait. Do, do you know? Do you know uh, what's interesting? That uh, Russia recently uh, enacted. Uh, they, they're like on the first reading, but the law passed on the first reading, and what they were explaining is that they will be. Uh, you know, recognizing Bitcoin for civil law and tax purposes. Okay. And what they were saying is in this way, people will get more protection of their rights because Bitcoin will be recognized as a property. Right. So it, it will be like a property after the law is passed. But before that, it, it's not a property recognized by, by the country. So it can't be stolen. Does that mean does that mean it can also not be taxed? Uh, no, not really. Uh, it, it's it's kind of a dual approach. It, uh, it, it is for for tax for tax purposes. It's recognized as taxable uh, taxable asset. It's recognized like financial asset. So, but it's thieves, not a property. So, will the thieves have to pay tax? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm paying tax for Bitcoin I stole. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a gain, isn't it? <laughs> That's insane, dude. It's crazy. All right, let's see if we have any, any questions for you. Uh, I know Alex has some questions. Uh, Alex, if you can send me any questions you have that have to do with um, law or legal, please send it to my WhatsApp starting right now. Just any questions you may have from the audience. That we've been waiting. All right. So I'm going to start asking you questions, okay? Okay. So Michael John Scott is asking this. Is it possible in the UK to register an offshore company to trade under as a self-employed crypto trader to reduce the amount of tax due on an increased crypto investment? All right. So I'm not UK qualified lawyer, although I graduated from King's College. Mm -hmm. um 
in in this regard, if even because I have some uh, experience with uh, registering offshore companies uh, for trading of Bitcoin, exactly. Um, and to to be honest, even offshore, the companies have some licensing uh, uh, regime there. So they have licensing requirements applying to them. Uh, regarding tax, it is case by case basis. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it probably can be possible, but it's it's really subject to a greater analysis, guys. I can I can answer like not that specific questions because if I answer it, to, it wouldn't be serious because it's obviously subject to analysis of the regulation of right. the applicable law to the specific. A specific um, country that uh, you're targeted. Right, right. Okay, it's okay. I'm just going to be answering answer the questions, and you can even explain that whenever you why why you can't answer certain questions. It's fine. Well, I'm just going to answer ask the questions as we go. Um, sure. Can lawyers use their company? Okay, Charlton Online is asking, can lawyers use their company bank account to buy and stake coins such as Hex and Ethereum? Bank accounts? Yes, yeah, so can lawyers use their company bank account to buy and stake coins such as Hex and Ethereum? I think... All right, so it, it is clear that Ethereum is obviously on, on the blockchain and the banks are still not linked to the blockchain. But... Uh, basically, what he's probably asking is because sometimes lawyers use their bank accounts on behalf of projects and people uh, to make purchases uh, that they can't because they don't have access. Mm -hmm. Because when when you say on the you know the the payslip, if, if if you say purchase of Bitcoin, they block your your account, they, uh, your account or just the transaction. It depends on the bank. But usually what, what people use is uh, lawyers' accounts so they can have access uh, to the banking system because uh, their companies, like crypto companies, don't have access to bank accounts. So they're using it as a lawyer, as an intermediary, you know, wow, to make okay. payments for the parties. Awesome. Uh, but uh, something, something else, Paul, worth noting here. Uh, recently, I even made video on this. The International Monetary Fund is urging the central banks to get connected to the blockchain, the mm -hmm. central banks of, of the states to be connected to the blockchain so that the cryptocurrencies can be more interoperable and uh, they can, you know, imagine stable coins being directly linked to cryptocurrencies and for cryptocurrencies to have direct access to the whole financial and payment system, like through the central right. banks. We don't have intermediaries. We don't need to worry bank, about bank accounts and all this kind of stuff. Awesome. It's, it's something that is probably laying in the future, but the International Monetary Fund is a very, very important organization, which is you know dictating... Uh, world policies in terms of financial stability nice. so we should be watching out for that all right michael john scott asks is it possible in the uk to register an offshore company to train under a self-employed crypto trader to reduce the amount of tax due on increased crypto investment thank you okay well, I, I, think I already, that's asked, that's I already that's asked that i was about to yeah. say you really he was really persistent about you know not paying taxes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course, and uh, also, you know, um, people in UK are worried that uh, uh, that they they might lose access to to many things since they are outside of the yeah. EU. So, uh, what I'd say is probably for them to get uh, uh, legal advice on where they can actually. Um, outsource their activities and uh, for the best taxable regime. Nice. All right. Ziggly Wiggly is asking, is there any taxes on crypto? I think I already asked yes. that, but yeah. It, it depends. It depends on the country, though. Yeah. It depends on the country. It depends on the crypto. Uh, for example, I know that in Switzerland, if you have held crypto for more than one or two years, 
uh, it's not a taxable income for you. Nice. Um, in, in the US, the IRS uh, recently uh, updated their questionnaires and their declarations. So on the top of the declarations, they're asking about if, if you have any crypto, if you have touched crypto, which is, which is amazing and uh, it's, it's a good thing and it's not a good thing at the same time because we are getting closer and closer to centralization. Uh, but the thing is, they're also, uh, the long-term held crypto is taxable under a different regime. So this question has a lot of aspects, but yeah, um, you, you, should, you, should, you guys, you should make your research uh, on, on the states that are more crypto friendly in terms of taxation. And also, I think there's a lot of countries that are gray area, like Europe is a gray area right now. They don't even know about crypto, even if you want to pay taxes on it, <laughs> at least in like certain countries in Europe. For, well, in my experience, uh, the tax authorities here are very, very active maybe hmm. for three months already. In, uh, in Bulgaria kind of, or, in, or in Europe? Yes, in, in Bulgaria as well. In Bulgaria as well. Uh, nice. They are targeting people with crypto because they know there is a lot of gains in there. But Paul, it's, it's really good for people to declare their uh, taxable income, uh, especially in crypto. Because at certain point, you know, we can main, make as much gains as we wish on the crypto platforms but at the end of the day we are doing this to have you know um to have resources yeah. to live well you know to f resources for the real life we are not living just for these platforms so at certain point we will want to make bigger purchase with this crypto even yeah. if you pay directly yeah. with crypto. I and, agree with you. and then yeah and then this guy that you are buying let's say car or a uh, house from they're going to you know to go to the tax authority and say, oh, this guy bought from me. So I have some income from him, which is huge. And then the tax authority will say, wow, 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 wow. You haven't declared your crypto, you haven't declared your income, and then you have a huge, huge problem. You can even go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. So better off. How, um, usually you declare your crypto, you pay your, your taxes when you get into, when you put it into a bank, correct? Um, yes, but also you can, you can declare the crypto depending if you are a natural person or legal entity. If you are a legal entity, you can declare your, your crypto even before that mm. as a financial asset with certain value, uh, at certain point, you know, uh, if you're trading with crypto, um, in, in general, in general for natural person, yes, you, you're declaring what are your gains. In yeah. crypto, but you know the they're starting to recognize that you have crypto on the platforms and uh, it has certain value and uh, it can be just sitting there also. So they're checking all your wallets. So <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Right. Yeah, and, and it's trackable. It's trackable. Yeah, it's totally trackable. Of course. All right, let's go. Let's move on. Uh, let's see what else we have. I have 10 next my investment in crypto in four months. How can I minimize capital gains tax in the US? In the US? Wow. <laughs> Which yeah, state probably should guess? ask her about that. Yeah, um, a lawyer. Uh, what's, I, I don't know what's, what's the system in the US in general in, in terms of taxation. If, if they would be taxing, if, if they recognized expenses or losses as well. Uh, like if if you so in sometimes when you are trading, if you put your gains into a position, let's say uh, conditional uh, limit limited position on uh, margin trading, uh, so they are not um, they are not considered to be gains until they are out of this position, and you know whether you gained or you lost, yeah. you still don't know, you know, uncertainty. It might be a loophole that some people might be using, but it's definitely subject to an advice from a local lawyer because somewhere they may recognize that and in other countries they may not. Okay. Also, 
Also, it's interesting what, what they're taxing. Is it, is it the Bitcoin or is it the gains in USDT? Hmm. It's also uh, also something different because if you are if they're taxing just the USDT or USDC or USD, um, you know, it's, it is a different story because if you are in the Bitcoin, then you are not taxable yet until you get out in stablecoin, right? Right. So it really, really depends on the uh, state where you are and local laws. Got you. All right. Um, Sasha Mesenberg is asking, but I think we must pay tax only if we sell our cr cryptocurrency or send it to a bank account. Or, question, I think you just answered that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the same. It, it's the same answer. Um, for natural persons, it's it's easier in general. You know, it's not just taxes, Paul. It's not just taxes. Um, you have to have proof uh, for source of income. Mm. This is mm. very important. It, it's not just for taxation purposes. If you, even if you go to an exchange to cash out. Uh, they are conducting KYC on you uh, and anti-money laundering uh, checks. Uh, and then you have to prove where do you have this income from? How did you 10x your, your crypto, right? You, you have to have clear background of your crypto. Otherwise, you may be in trouble with uh, not, not just the tax authorities. You know, there is the police and uh, uh, special... Uh, special police forces uh, dedicated just just to that you know economic police and this this kind of stuff mm -hmm. all right um what can the lawyer tell me more about xrp would the lawyer invest in xrp is he, does he like it do, do, do you like xrp would you invest in it he's always <laughs> one xrp guy <laughs> somewhere yes. yeah okay on a personal note on a personal note i don't like XRP, especially after reading their case. Yeah. Um, I I don't like the way they they were they were treating token holders mm. because basically they were playing all behind the curtains. Um, they were playing with the big players, you know, had many over the counter sales, which were harming the persons on the on the market, um, and. Also, uh, the XRP case was very, very strong case. It still is. It still is a very, very strong case um, because the behavior of the team behind behind XRP was exactly as if they are dealing with a security. You know, they they are using yeah. this token to fund the project, and not just at the beginning. Because what is fair, make an ICO or IEO or uh, DEX, uh, DEX offering, um, but then leave the token to the market, leave it to decentralize, leave it to, you know, to yeah. the community for, for them as a reward uh, in general to develop the project. But holding the token, the, the huge part of the supply, and then dealing with it, speculating with it, uh, you know, pumping the market, announcing partnerships, uh, just for the sake of uh, their announcement, paying the partners to be your partners so you can have this announcement and to pump the market and to benefit from that. It's unfair practice. Yeah. Um, so this is why I don't like XRP. On the other hand, what I believe is that at certain point, these guys won't go, on, go to jail. They have surrounded themselves with the best lawyers. Mm. Um, they are probably getting a settlement. And they are probably going to try to develop further the project. They won't stop it. They, they will develop it further in a more fair way, um, which will, would be dictated in, of this, uh, by this settlement. And for me, um, I personally have a position uh, which is favorable to XRP exactly for that reason. Because I believe that uh, the foot will be over when the, the case is over. And then the XRP will explode because That's it's one of the old That's why token. As soon yeah. as we have clarity, and as yeah. soon as we break resistance, absolutely. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm looking at. But it may or may not happen. So yeah, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. Total gamble. 
Right. So um, let me see if we have any more questions. Oh my God! I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make Alex put like this part of the video in a separate video. Lawyer <laughs> buys XRP. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have some questions of that, that I have from Twitter and I have from YouTube. So, I write my own songs, asks. I guess he writes his own songs. Do crypto uh, YouTubers yeah, risk getting... Do crypto YouTubers risk getting sued for celebrating coins or projects? Yeah, they do. Uh, depending on how they're structuring their content and uh, depending if... Um, they have these, uh, you know, disclaimers. The so-called disclaimers are so, so important. Uh, I myself, uh, I'm also participating in a, in a blockchain-related uh, um, channel. Uh, but the thing is always, always at the beginning of the video, you need to warn the viewer yeah. that you are not a financial advisor, not providing financial advice, that everything is for entertainment and uh, educational purposes. Um, and therefore, uh, the end user cannot establish reliance on what you're saying. Mm. And, you know, if, if it is for fun, it is for fun. And it should be clear. Although you're expressing strong opinions, it's your personal opinion and you should say the other person that they cannot rely just yeah. on your yeah. words. They need to make their own research and analysis and to get advice from professionals. So I believe this would mitigate these risks to a maximum extent possible. So the, the second part of that question is, is the not financial advice disclaimer valid or just sort of an urban myth? You know how YouTube is, whenever we talk about projects, like, not financial advice, but it's financial advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it, is, it is not an advice. You know, if, if you, if you uh, just break the nexus between you and the viewer in saying, this is my personal opinion, I'm sharing with you my own research on this topic and my opinion, uh, but you, you, you are not my client. Yeah. You, uh, you are not somebody that should be following just what I'm saying. Go yeah. on and do your research. It's, it's not a myth. It's, it's an important disclaimer, and uh, it, it should be working in court. And, and, and would writing this on in the description qualify? Yeah, it's, it's important. Yeah, it, it would only enforce uh, this uh, because it's uh, about, you know, when, when you're making a case, you're assessing all the facts about yeah. it. Um, and in general, you, you should be assessing uh, the everything that every person involved does. And if you have done enough, like in the XRP case, uh, all of these facts that I shared with you were assessed in mm -hmm. terms of um, thinking about pursuing this case. And if it was different, if it was more fair, you know, like the, in the case of Ethereum, they also had a case against the Ethereum Foundation. Um, and the sufficient decentralization, the community uh, mitigated the risk of Ethereum being qualified as... Actually, they qualified it as a, a security, but they said it was a security when it was offered yeah. on the ICO stage. And now it's not security because of sufficient decentralization. And it's the same with every case. If you have done all you could, you know, to to mitigate the risk for somebody to be following your advice, therefore everything that you can do additionally would be counted. Got you, got you. Okay. Positive Life asks, will tax laws change to be more favorable? Um, more favorable? I don't know. It's, it's subject to every state's policy, to be honest. Right now, what I believe is that the wise, the wise states are embodying laws which are more favorable to crypto and uh, providing clarity to crypto. So right now, 
we are fighting to have clarity. We are not even fighting for a better treatment. In general, financial instruments have better tax treatment in all countries, financial instruments. Right. So we are, we are waiting for clarity to know how to account. Because, you know, uh, in, in many cases, we are accounting the crypto as we think it should be. Uh, based on previous experience with similar, you know, financial yeah. um, contracts and uh, bonds and uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, but but in general, we don't have clear issue. You should be uh, accounting your crypto in this and this and this way. So we're fighting first for this. Then we can move forward to, to be fighting for better tax treatment. Okay. Uh, what happens if <laughs> same 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 guy asks the second part of the question? What happens if you lose your crypto in a boating accident? In, in what accident? So what happens if you lose your crypto in a boating accident? In other words, somebody comes to get tax, I guess, from crypto, and he loses his ledger in the the ocean. Does he still have to pay tax for it? Or if they find out he has crypto and it falls off the boat i think it's going to be humorous <laughs> yeah i i understand, I understand yeah um it, it is I, I haven't heard of such case um we we have to be thinking about it because uh, obviously uh in general you you cannot be taxed on something which is destroyed exactly so let's say you you have a house and the house has gone uh, because of uh, earthquake. You cannot be taxed on this house because the object uh, which is uh, subject to taxation is gone. Right. So the logical answer would be that in this case, um, um, you, you, you shouldn't be taxed. But the thing is, if it appears that you have jumped after it and uh, you have accidentally found it and have transferred to this this crypto to some other accounts uh, and then later on it comes out you are in trouble yeah what, what, what if the, what, what if it's washed ashore in a different country from the waves <laughs> 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 hey it happens all right let's, let's <laughs> i'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions like that actually all right no it's fun can Okay, I, 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 I see if you can. Uh, okay, Hex the next Bitcoin asks, can you explain the wash sale more clearly? I, I don't understand um, the question either. I, I don't I don't know. Uh, I've heard the term, but uh, I think I, he's talking I about wash know. trading, and I don't think it's um... all right. A lot of how to pay little or no tax. <laughs> Locally asks, uh, how to pay little or no taxes. <laughs> yeah, go to a country where crypto well, is not Portugal? taxed. <laughs> it's Portugal, right? So, no, no, that, that's that's uh, so like in Ecuador, people go to Ecuador because of it. Oh. Um, yeah, miners go there. Uh, probably Thailand as well. You know, uh, crypt crypto gave us the liberty to go everywhere in the world and to be trading from everywhere and to be living the great life, you know? And um, if, if, you are, if you are in a country that is not that strict on taxation and they're not that keen, you can establish yourself there as a tax resident. And where, if you are a tax resident there and your activities, uh, it is the main place of your business activities, then you're taxable there. Mm. And this is what you need to establish if, if you want to be paying less taxes. Do you that's, mean if you that's... live there or do you have to move there? Do you have to move there or can you live um, in the country? It, it depends on the country. So let's say in Bulgaria, you have to be like what, what, one third of the time there. Um, it depends on the country the, to be established as a tax resident. They have different, you know, uh, different requirements. Mm. Okay. Estonia is also in interesting um, because because there you don't pay taxes unless you are taking dividends from the company. But if you make 
you know, direct. Uh, ev everything can be expense uh, on your company, like uh, rent, uh, car, and this kind of stuff. Uh, you can be paying with the company without taking the dividend, without being taxed. And I think you don't even have to live there because you have like this E. Yeah, residence. you don't. You don't. That's insane. You don't. You have your e residence. Yes. That's insane, actually. I I, I don't. Uh... So let me see if I have any more questions. And if not, then I can ask. Oh, I do have questions. Wait. I don't have. Uh, Alex, if you have any more questions, please pass them through the WhatsApp. So what are some common questions you get as a lawyer in crypto? What are some common questions you get all the time? A common question. Well, basically, the tax questions are, yeah. are most common nowadays. Otherwise, what what we what we do usually for our clients is uh, drafting contracts, you know, for for the purchase of uh, the crypto, mm. because, because because people do want to to be accountable and to have, you know, do do I have protections? Mostly mostly common. Uh, question do i have protection on my crypto when i'm dealing with third parties how can i protect myself right this is probably the most most common question that that i've heard mm. okay and um you answered how you do that before what's the best question you ever heard or questions the best question uh legal question regarding crypto yes I'll def define best question, actually. Uh, well, you define <laughs> What's the best question okay. you ever heard? <laughs> the best question, the funniest question the funniest. that I've heard is, uh, is uh, how is it regulated in India? <laughs> you know, that's, that was the, the, the best question because we were discussing a project which was uh, going on in Europe. Right. And they had, but how is the same thing regulated in India? Uh, it's it's important question because you know people don't understand that regulation is different in different countries. It's yeah. not one unified system, and this is why when you're starting a project in crypto, you should be assessing whether you have the proper regulatory framework where you are. And another another great question that I've heard is also, can I put real estate in crypto? And and obviously, again, the same answer. Please provide me with the project, and let's see if there is any uh, any country that would mm. fit your necessities. And uh, recently, um, Switzerland became one of the countries that is suitable for this kind of tokens that are property based. Oh, wow, okay. Many people are are asking for property based tokens because they want to put the real world on blockchain. Mm -hmm. They want to have the mobility which is associated with blockchain to be applicable also to the real world uh, assets, which are also you know uh, they have their intrinsic value, and they want to transition this to the blockchain and to be able to you know uh, be more liquid by transferring this value between themselves got you got you all right so let's say i'm selling land is is there a way to actually sell land um not, not sell land. is there a way to accept cryptocurrency for plots of land if you're selling land as a company is, is, is that a question i can ask yeah of course yes yes there is way there there are probably two ways of that Again, depending on t your tax authority, but in general, um, you can you can accept payment in any form or shape which is you know uh, acceptable for a legal entity in your company to do, because it's it's a type of consideration. So, for example, you can you can simply exchange one land for another, correct? Mm -hmm. So, why wouldn't you be able to exchange? Uh, one asset for a different type of asset, which is not money. Of course, there should be some, uh, you know, probably there should be some monetary 
uh, value that needs to be put on the uh, notary deed, which is for you know uh, transition um, transferring the ownership over the land. And in traditional countries, they cannot put uh, price uh, to bitcoins, but they will put the price in the dollar equivalent. Right. Right. Got you. Um, did because based on this price, they are calculating how to tax this uh, transaction. So, let me ask um, you. so you can you can also the second the second option is just to go through an exchange, hmm. and for the exchange accepts the payment on your behalf, and then they are transferring this payment but converted to money to you to your bank account. But so you. Yeah, basically accepting Bitcoin. But can I tie something to a cryptocurrency? Let, okay, let me give you an example. Let's say there's a company that sells land, that has um, land with investments for trees or something like that, right? Can yeah. they make a cryptocurrency, create a cryptocurrency that's tied to that land? So, for example, um, even like timeshare, if you will. You, you know, what, 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 where you split something. I know. Like, Right. I know we've been, we've been working on such project, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so is it possible? Yeah, it is possible, especially with uh, the one that I mentioned, uh, the Swiss law. Right. And the Swiss law, now with the changes. So what, what was the problem b before the, the law was enacted? The problem was that, um, in general, you can have this token. Yes, you can create it. You can furnish the token with uh, a certain set of rights and obligations, correct? But you cannot legally transfer this token on the blockchain mm. directly to a, a third party. Yeah. And right now, what they created is, uh, with the law, the necessary infrastructure for, uh, for uh, transferring transfer of title and also the recognition for the transfer of title over the blockchain, mm. which is tremendous. This, this is a game changer because you could be creating these tokens before, but if you cannot legally transfer them to somebody, they're useless. Got you. But there, okay, let me see if we have any more questions from the chat. And by the way, if you're watching this, please like the video, give that video a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, these kind of interviews, please consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Um, can people pay the lawyer with Bitcoin? Yeah, absolutely. We accept Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> pay anyone with Bitcoin, I think. Um, <laughs> all right, Faze. Maybe I think someone wants to hire you. <laughs> Randall Patterson says, if you buy a coin and after a few months you sell it and buy another coin, will you have to pay taxes? Um, I... I don't think so because uh, what what you are taxed on is your on your uh, gains in money, mm. right? On the monetary value uh, of this, and uh, in general, in for many tax authorities, the approach is for you uh, to be taxable when when you have clear gains. If if, if your gain is not clear because the the new token that you are bought can be way. Uh, can become quickly way cheaper than what you have gained in terms of, you know, money value. And the money value is what is uh, considered uh, by the authorities in terms of taxation. So if you buy and you just trade into stable coins and other cryptocurrencies, then you're not subject to tax at that time? Yeah, in general, yes. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. I, I think there's a lot of um, ways to work around it then. For people that are asking. There is a lot of ways, yes. There is a lot of ways. It, it really, it, it's not general. Again, the regulation is different in every, every country. So uh, we cannot give definitive answers to that, you know, if, if you're not uh, in the specifics of the case. Right. So let me ask you another question. If What's, what's one question you wish people asked you, but they never do? Oh, one question that I wish people to ask me now, as a lawyer. As a lawyer in, in crypto. You know, I, I, don't, I, I don't have a favorite question that I want to be asked. Okay. What I want is to be asked 
before trouble happens. <laughs> I, want, I want for people to learn that they go to the Lord right at the beginning and not after they're in trouble. That's, that's, that's the question that I want to be asked. The, the question that is asked on time. <laughs> so, okay. So everybody watching this live stream, at least now you know, go before you get in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, when you start, when you start, you, you know, there, there was, on a side note, a really interesting uh, project that uh, came to me, uh, and they were already having troubles with the co-founders. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, guys, how can you start a project? How can you have more people involved in it? They are contributing to it. To have arrangements between yourselves, and not imagine that something can go wrong at a certain point and you don't have anything tangible you know to reflect your arrangements and to protect yourselves i i, I cannot i cannot imagine doing business like that and you shouldn't be doing anything especially in a not regulated field like mm -hmm. cryptocurrency um or if you if you ask later imagine the uh, the repo guys they have asked their lawyers mm. uh, about that and they have law warned them uh for for you know uh the possibility for their token to be uh, qualified as a security if they follow certain way of a behavior and they have all precisely this way of behavior that the lawyers told them not to so well, four billion dollars i'm sure they're gonna get away with stuff yeah yes they, they they will they will pay they will pay huge fines but yeah they will Here, get away here's with a good this. question for you what's going on with tether because i heard that they that, that they got a fine of 18.5 million dollars and they're not allowed to um, conduct business in new york they have to leave new york but could this is this a bullish or is this bearish? Because this could be taken later on to what? The SEC maybe become something bigger? They found some stuff? What's your, what's your, do you have an opinion on it? Yes, for, for me, it, it is both bullish and uh, you can also also think that... Uh, um, so what what's important for me at this point, and I'd be watching in the uh, upcoming months if new investigations are started by different authorities, as you mentioned. But if they don't start, and there, there wasn't such a big scandal for me with this investigation, if they have found out something which is very scandalous, very outrageous, they would have communicated this. Yeah. And they haven't. So, and... Uh, so for me, and also you, you don't need to have one investigation ended for another to start. Mm. So if they find out in outrageous, probably this, uh, this uh, regulator, this was the attorney general in this case for the New York State. They have the obligation, you know, to notify the other authorities so they can get involved in the right away. They're, they shouldn't be... Uh, finishing so, we so for me i'm it. more i'm more bullish on that i'm more bullish because uh, for me they haven't found something which is that outrageous what about all the papers they need to bring up they said that they that they that they could they may not had them or something like that or they didn't conduct business in a certain way that they were supposed to there's all things they can get out of or is that what the fine yeah is? it's yeah exactly that's what i'm saying it's it's not it's not such a big violation for me, when I read the story, um, the hugest problem was that they didn't communicate the loss of money uh, because they, they, they were, um, you know, the, 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 so, so the institutions, the, the one institution, I cannot remember what was that, crypto something. Uh, they, they were using a uh, financial institution, a payment institution that got their accounts frozen because this payment institution was associated with uh, uh, drug cartels and this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, and it is probably because, you know, uh, Bitrex and Tether are also risk high risk clients, right? So this institution was probably not uh, estranged uh, from high risk clients. And mm -hmm. these high risk clients uh, appear to be too risky, you know. Um, so their account got frozen and they lost or are fighting to recover somewhere around uh, uh, 850 million dollars, mm -hmm. right? So they didn't disclose this and they tried to cover it. Mm. Uh, so Bitrex tried to, to cover it. Bitrex uh, while or Bitmax? Taking, uh, ta 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 sorry? Bitrex or No, Bitrex? no, it's Bit Bitrex. Oh, it's okay. Bitrex. Yeah, so they're trying They're trying to cover this while taking loan from Tether. Oh, and at okay. this point, because the loan was so huge, Tether didn't dis uh, disclose this uh, loan to the public. And at this point, the tether wasn't covered one to one with dollars, mm. because they say yes, we have assets to cover the tether, but these assets weren't dollars. They they were uh, considering this loan as this receivable as an asset, and that that wasn't disclosed to the public. And this is what uh, got the attorney general mad in general. Got you, got you. So, but, 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 so, do you think it's a done deal? Is the case is over? The, or do we have ninety days so, to find out? So, what, what, what it says is that uh, it is um, Bitrex has uh, repaid all the debt, okay. and obviously with the growth of Bitcoin, it wasn't that hard for them yeah, to yeah. repay this because they were more in crypto, and uh, right now crypto has a great advantage over you know traditional money. Uh, so it was easy for them. They repaid the debt. And for me, right now, things are calm. For me, if, if they have to, uh, because the, right now they have to report, you know, every month to the attorney general. This means that everything, everything is transparent. You know, they cannot be hiding things from the attorney general. Nice. Okay. So I'm more bullish. So any warnings about any projects to... Anybody watching right now that may be popular or something like that? Um, guys, look at the NFTs. Look at the NFTs and the projects which are building on the NFT space. For me, this is the next culture which is forming. Um, and also, if I want a warning, if, if I want to warn something, is about decentralized finance. Hmm. Um it is not, it is not uh, an accident that many teams behind the centralized exchanges are anonymous. Yeah, it is, it is not by accident because mostly these activities are regulated. And I, I heard what, what was that? Especially the exchanges, the right? Super. I, I think it was a super token, which was related to uh, NFT, NFT platform. Uh, where they are managing, it, it's very promising project, by the way, but they're managing a portfolio of NFTs, collectibles, and they're tokenizing this portfolio. So, you know, you are getting in something that is very, very likely to be qualified as a financial contract. Right. Uh, because, because the financial contract is based on the Howey test. And the Howey test says that if you have investment of money, which is investment of crypto. And then you, you have a common enterprise, which is obviously one collection, which is common enterprise where everybody's putting their money into. And if you are relying, if you are expecting profit, which you are at the appreciation of the NFTs, and then if, if this profit derives solely from the efforts of others, uh, and which is obviously from the management of, of this portfolio, Wow, how, what do you think? Is it is it is it kind of a security? Kind of. Um, so for me, guys, it, it, for the, all your viewers, it's very important to note that many of the projects are um, probably will be subject to scrutiny uh, from this standpoint. And yeah, really, really consider if if these projects are striving to have more 
decentralization, like real decentralization of their token, or uh, you are dealing with centralized entity, which may be subject to attacks from uh, the authorities. So, are, so you're bullish on NFTs, but you're warning against DeFi. No, I'm 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 warning about any any scheme which uh, which falls under under this uh, qualification of financial contract uh, that we just discussed. So bad players so, in the industry, not all the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not on all the industry at all. Yes, uh, because it it really needs to be decentralized. You know, if it is truly decentralized, then. Uh, you, you have, and you know, this is the next step that was that surprised the authorities because the authorities just got in crypto, just got uh, some draft um, regulations for the ICOs because they understood ICOs. And then there comes the decentralized exchange. And they are now trying to figure out how they would be regulating this, if it is possible, or would they ban it at all? Like it's you. You should be watching out for what regulators will be doing, mm. because it, they they cannot buy the code, but they can ban the people that are connected to the code. At certain point, your money has to come out of the system, and if it is trackable to such exchange, you will be prevented from using it. You know, right. it is simple as that. Got you. All right, man. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? Where can people find you if they need to find you? Yeah, if they need to find me, they can obviously find me on the on the social media, George Suse, uh, on uh, Facebook. Uh, they can find me in LinkedIn as well, uh, George Suse. Uh, they can find me on the web page of uh, Evido, of the Evido project. They can also contact me through there. Um, I'm always, always very, very keen. I'm not just a lawyer, as you might have noticed. I'm also into investing in crypto, yeah. and I love this game. Um, I just, I just want to to warn the people to be smart when they're playing it, because if you're not smart, you can get hit very, very badly. One last question: Did you buy? Did you buy Dogecoin? <laughs> Someone's just asked. no. I didn't. No, he didn't. No, I didn't. Lawyer. I... <laughs> No, 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 no. Dogecoin is great. Dogecoin is it's actually a meme great. Coin that can go you up. Know. I know, I know. But you know, no, no. I mean, Elon Musk is not uh, dumb ass. Yeah, He's not course. dumb. He knows what to uh, what to push. Uh, it is Bitcoin and Dogecoin. They are fairly launched tokens. Mm. They're not tokens issued through ICOs. They cannot be qualified as uh, uh, securities because they're just you know, subjects which are based on the blockchain, they're not related to the development of any project. Hmm. Um, so Dogecoin from this, this standpoint is good. What I don't like is, you know, the culture forming behind it. Yeah. And the groups, the uh, people are forming groups to, you know, pump, uh, the, pump the coin. Um, That's bad. And That's bad. Tweet, tweets, Tweets are moving the market, and I am I am very much against that. I am very much against tweets moving the market. We should be having you know natural na natural exchange of value, and store of value, and this is what we should be looking at. We shouldn't be looking at manipulative practices for uh, pumping one coin or, or another. Got you, got you. All right, awesome, man. Thank you so much. People can actually find you. I'll put the links down below the video. They can see your name right there and also a video up here, which yeah. is a great project and, to listen to, by me, the way. You have me on LinkedIn, right? You have me on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn I, I, you can... I, I think so, but if I don't, I'll still put it down in the description below yeah. after this video sure. goes live and everything. Thank you so much, George. I really appreciate you, even, even though you were late. Thank you for coming. I learned a lot. We learned a lot. Yeah. We learned a lot. And, and, and really hope to have you back on the channel soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It would be a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. All right. And thank you guys. If you like this interview, please subscribe and hit the bell notification button for so you don't miss the next one. And thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.